Speak with Jim Coyle. Hope your uh, day's off to a good start. If not, hopefully we can change that for you. We got Jake behind the wheel, getting everything done there, and uh, we got a lot to talk about today. And a big show as 2019 Indiana men's basketball Trace Jackson Davis will join us today, as will Mike Schumann from the Daily Hoosier. Lots to talk about. How about a little gambling? Top 100 NBA draft, man. There's some changes. Where's Romeo? NBA playoffs are still going on. Playoffs? Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of playoffs, man, Eric Gordon, whoo, he's, uh, you know, we just had his Eric Gordon Sr. on last week. Man, he's talking about, we're on it. Man, we're, we're relevant, I'm telling you. Uh, yesterday we had Tom Coverdale. The last time that Indiana had back-to-back Indiana Mr. Basketballs, Tom Coverdale was the, uh, was the final piece in that duo. Well, they've got it again, and Trace Jackson Davis is the final piece in that duo, and we've got him today. So uh, looking forward to that awesome uh, awesome lineup for you. Uh, but I forget what I was talking about. What was I talking about, Jake? I got all too many things. Eric Gordon in the playoffs. Oh, yeah, exactly. Eric Gordon in the NBA playoffs. Man, he... <laughs> He went off in the last game, but I don't think they played. I, I've not been following uh, the NBA here of late other than that, but how about the 30-point effort for uh, Eric Gordon and the Houston Rockets? Man, they're, they're, they're trying to get past the Warriors. Tonight you've got Philadelphia, Toronto, Portland, and Denver. I don't see a score. Was there any any games last night? I don't see any. Um, uh, yeah, Houston actually beat Golden State last night. Tied the series. There we go. No, uh, Milwaukee b- beat Boston one thirteen. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. I don't know why it wouldn't pop up. Yeah, the Milwaukee box. They go on the road into Boston and they beat the Celtics one thirteen one oh one. Um, and they lead that series three to one. Now, you could say the that Celtics. they have them looking like deer in the headlights. Oh, I wish I had a little rim shot there for you. Perfect. Perfect. But yeah, how about the, the Celtics? They come in and they sweep the Pacers looking pretty strong. Well, they're about to be not swept out of the playoffs, but dang near. They're down uh, three games to one in that series. And then the Rockets and the Warriors. Last night, the Rockets at home, a 112-108 win over the t- to tie that series at two apiece. That one's going to be uh, that's going to be a fun, fun series. And last night we talked about uh, Eric Gordon having a great. It was James Harden with 38 points, four assists, and 10 rebounds. On the other side of the ledger, Kevin Durant, 34 points, Steph Curry with 30. But how about Eric Gordon, man? He had 30 points in the game before last. Man, he is still stroking it. EG is still getting it done. Uh, that's, uh, I guess I'm a Rockets fan for the rest of the NBA playoffs. Playoffs? but uh, Playoffs? Exactly. Hopefully he can uh, – that would be cool to see Eric Gordon in the NBA Finals and possibly win a championship. Get him on here next when that's done. But how many of you follow the NBA? I'm not a big uh, – there's there's not a lot going on right now, but I just uh, – I have enough that I still don't follow the NBA that much. I was never a fan of the NBA for some reason. I don't know why. Other than when uh, – back in the bird days when I was a kid, and uh, it was – and I didn't really have an appreciation for it until afterwards and how good that era was. And, man, that was a different era of basketball, trust me. But uh, it's going on now in a pretty good series between the Warriors and the Rockets. 
uh, as Houston's trying to dethrone those guys. Again, tonight, 76ers are at Toronto. Is OG still out? He out for the year? I can't remember if he's, I don't know if he's even back or not. Uh, he's not back yet. Uh, the next time he would be back would probably be the finals if Toronto makes it there. Ah. Portland is at Denver tonight. Denver's a four and a half point favorite. That game's not till 1030. So hopefully I'll be asleep about them. But um, there you go. You got games all night at eight o'clock and, and then at 1030. Trey Jackson Davis joins us today. Mike Schumann from the Daily Hoosiers is also going to be on with us. The NBA draft. The names kind of keep going up and down a little bit. But one thing that has been consistent and one name that has been going down is Indiana's Romeo Langford. He's now projected to be down around, uh, I think it was 22 or so, or is it? Yeah, 22. We've got him slotted down to the 22 spot now. What that means, though, oh, man, there must be a stupid video going off. Don't you love that? God, I hate that. But um, the Pacers have a, a, a draft slot around 17, I think. So is there a possibility that Romeo ends up Staying in Indiana, would that be something the Pacers would like to have? Everybody talks about a ticket boost and all that, or you know, sales boost. I, I think that that would be a very short-lived thing. If if there's no production, it's not going to boost anything. Now there probably would be an initial boost, maybe. What do you think? Hit us up on the text line. 812-269-6367. Would Romeo Langford be a good fit for uh, the Pacers alongside Victor Oladipo? Not that he would start, but uh, that would be a scenario, a potential scenario. But the one thing is you're looking at a guy that started out at being listed be- – in the season before at around the five spot. And he has dropped like a rock. He's down to 22. He's out of no longer a lottery projected lottery pick. Still the first round though, which uh, definitely beats me. Dropped down to around 22. These are just projections, of course. Carson Edwards is around 27, so uh, they've gotten much, much closer. Tyler Hero at 18 for Kentucky projected. They have three Kentucky players listed ahead of Romeo now. Darius Garland, remember that? Point guard went to Vanderbilt after flirting with Indiana. He's still listed at number eight spot. Projected number one, of course, Zion. And then how about Ja Morant from Murray State? Worked his way all the way up to the number two projected draft spot. Point guard from uh, for the Racers. He had a pretty magical season. Duke has three players in the top six. So we'll see how that turns out. But uh, what do you think of Romeo going to the Pacers? Hit us up on the text line, 812-269-6367. It's an interesting thought, but that that, that kind of fairy tale thing does, just doesn't always work out. We've seen it before with David Bailey and, and the like, and I'm not comparing those two players because they're two completely different type of players. But it's it's a curiosity thing. It is certainly a curiosity. Maryland landed a big old fish for their pond.
They get a commitment from a seven foot two internet phenom, Chol Mariah. He's for the 2019 class. They officially signed seven foot one, Chol Mariah. He's currently out of Chandler, Arizona, but he's actually from where is that? It's the Sudan, I think. Depending on who you ask, he's either a three star or four star. I think 247 ESPN has him as a four star, but he's definitely taller than seven feet. And he has a seven foot 11 wingspan. If he's going to be able to move, he will be a problem in the middle. You will have to get a body on him all the time just to keep him away from the damn basket to be able to get to the basket. Or you're going to have to shoot the ball, which automatically poses a problem for Indiana. A seven foot eleven wingspan. That's that's uh that's a problem for teams right there. It, that's just automatically uh, an automatic problem. So he right now is listed as seven foot two. That's a big dude, man. But he weighs two hundred and thirty pounds in that seven foot two body. That's like 10 more pounds than me. He's got a foot on me, a foot and an inch, and only outweighs me by 10 pounds. But man, he looks like uh he looks like a problem, I'm telling you. Originally from the South Sudan. He moved to the U.S. as a middle schooler in 2014, previously attended IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. ESPN ranks him as the number two center in Arizona. Oh, my gosh. He's seven foot two. And he's only the number two center in Arizona. Who's number one? But uh, Mark Turgeon, he lands him a big fish. Speaking of landing big fish. Again, how about Tom Crean? Right now, the uh, 247 composite rankings have Anthony Edwards at the top, number one. Heading to Georgia to play for Tom Crean. James Wiseman in the second slot to Memphis. Cole Anthony in the third slot going to North Carolina. Isaiah Stewart from uh, Lalamure in Indiana going to Washington. R.J. Hampton at number five, he's uncommitted, 43% headed to Memphis, 43% to Kansas, so it looks like a coin toss if he's going to Kansas or uh, Memphis. So I guess Kansas has to hope that Adidas check showed up. See if uh, Bill Self sending any more thank you texts to Brandon Dawkins. Vernon Carey, headed to Duke. Scotty Lewis in the seventh spot, going to Florida. Nico Mannion, eighth, going to Arizona. Now, does that change? Why? And and I'm surprised. I'll be honest with you. I'm a little surprised. He hasn't asked for and a, a. to be let out of his NI National Letter of Intent if he has not already. How do you say uh, Precious Achua? <laughs> He's in the number nine spot, and he is also looking at, he looks to be headed to Memphis, projection-wise. Man, that would give them a lot, a lot, a lot of talent. And then you've got, of course, Lester Quinones, who's making his decision this Friday, also expected 
to head to either Memphis or potentially Indiana. He his he has come out and said those are his final two schools. As a matter of fact, many think he's going to Memphis. I, I I'm one of those, but you got to leave open the potential that he sees too the room to be too crowded there. And I I don't know that that's to be the case. I really don't. Because that doesn't stop Duke from piling up talent. It doesn't stop Kentucky from piling up talent. As right now, Kentucky has three in the top 15. Starting at 10, Tyrese Maxey. Khalil Whitney is number 11. And Keon Brooks is number 14. Of course, Keon Brooks from Fort Wayne, went to Lalamure last year, was long thought to be headed to Indiana. And then the wheels fell off for Indiana last year, as did the recruiting for Keon Brooks. How about Washington? Washington. Washington has two in the top 13. Florida has two in the top 12. Because they ended up landing Trey Mann. The Louisville Cardinals, Samuel Williamson in the number 15 spot. Duke with Matthew Hurt, number another spot for them. Here's another guy going to Arizona, Josh Green at number 17 from IMG. Do, they, do, these, do those guys going to Arizona, do they ask for a release from this National Letter of Intent? Trenton Watford. Many see him. He's listed 87% going to LSU. I, I, I would just, I've made my feelings known on that. And then it just sprinkles out. And then you finally see Indiana number 27 with Trace Jackson Davis, who uh, just won Indiana's Mr. Basketball Award. We'll have him on the program today. But as you can see, the uh, the recruiting efforts by Archie Miller on a national scene, not, not yet there. As you have to drop down to 27 to finally see Indiana on the board. But they're waiting to uh, see what Lester Canones has to say on Friday. We'll certainly find out. My gosh, Duke, Duke, Duke. There's a lot of Dukes on there, man. There's another Arizona, number 39. I'm just surprised to see these guys that are still lined up with uh, Arizona at the moment with an impending investigation. With There's a great cloud around Sean Miller out there. I'm surprised that Arizona has not suspended him. But again, they're getting into legalities of this, that, and the other thing. Uh, innocent till proven guilty. Innocent till proven on an FBI wiretap. We got a lot coming up on the program today. Like I said, 2019 Indiana Mr. Basketball. Trace Jackson Davis is on the program as is Mike Schumann from the Daily Hoosier. Looking forward to getting to all that. Plenty more. We're one step away from having sports wagering in Indiana. We'll talk about that as well. Stay tuned. Indiana Sports Speed from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios is next. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Speed. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. 
Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. It's Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. For the best recycling and waste removal service, turn to the area's leader, Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling, a homegrown company serving southern Indiana since 1995. Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling serves Floyd, Clark, Harrison, and Washington counties for excellent service and peace of mind. Call Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling today at 812-944-5642. That's 812-944-5642. Keep life sweet with Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. Hey, sports fans, this is Lily King. Make sure you tune into Indiana Sports Week with Jim Coyle. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Speed. Thanks a lot for taking us along wherever you're going, whatever you're doing. We appreciate you taking Indiana Sports Speed along for the ride as always. Jim Coyle with you. And we are so fortunate to be joined by one of my all-time favorites, Tom Coverdale, former Indiana basketball player. Tom, how are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic. How about you? Can't complain. Doesn't do any good. Nobody wants to listen to it. But I'm glad we've got you here because they certainly want to listen to you. Uh, I, I know you're still working. Uh, you, last time we talked, you were working with AAA. Who's your AAA uh, taking care of the people on the roads? Uh, how's that going? Um, it's going well. Yeah, I'm in the insurance department there, director of sales, and uh, living on the north side of Indy, and, and everything's going really well. So we can keep uh, track of. Uh, now, are you able to follow uh, a lot of college basketball action with that? Or I know you got a family now. And there's a lot of things that keep a guy busy now. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially around tournament time, I think you're you're just like anybody else. But definitely follow Indiana every single game and keep up with them. Uh, don't get down to Bloomington as much as I'd like, like you said, with a family and, and twins that are two years old. That definitely keeps me busy. So by the time by the time they go to bed, my couch and watching it on TV sounds a lot better. <laughs> Absolutely. It sounds a lot better to a lot of people, especially this last season. Things uh, didn't go as great as uh, a lot of people would like to have seen. Of course, they had a 12-game losing streak. But right now, the big thing is the recruiting, man. And I know that the recruiting today is a lot different than when you were taking part of that. It, you didn't have the social media aspect. I mean, today you got people making announcements on TV or on uh, recordings on social media. Back then, you didn't even have an announcement. Did you even have an announcement when you you were recruited no we <laughs> i basically talked to coach knight on the phone and then they uh they contacted a couple local papers and the indianapolis star and stuff like that and it came out in the paper so yeah a lot different recruiting world than when i was you know coming up through high school uh which you know i think it you know it, it makes it a lot harder just from it it makes it so the kids can switch a lot more if that makes sense I mean when we were growing up we kind of knew the schools we want we got to know the coaches and really didn't have fan interaction so it was I want to go to this school because I love Indiana instead of getting into all the hype of social media and that aspect of things yeah, and like he's talking about the recruiting, how it's changed so much, but not only uh, for those things, but now uh, you've got all the other people that are involved with the AAU and everybody's got a handler and this and that. How how can that go any way but bad when you have that many people involved in something like that? Yeah, I, c- I couldn't agree more, and I think that the biggest – Thing that has changed from when I was growing up to now is the AAU scene uh, and just to show the biggest you know change is I think a lot of the high school coaches in Indiana I, I, you know after coaching college ball for six years and being in the south I think they're second to none and, and would put them up with any coaches in the state but a lot of the AAU coaches you know after being around it don't have the best uh, interest of the kids so it's hard to to gauge who to listen to. But when I was growing up, my AAU coach was J.R. Holmes, who's the all-time winningest coach at Bloomington South and another high school coach. So I think the biggest difference is, is you're getting consistent funda- – we were getting consistent fundamental coaching year-round. Uh, when you talk about my high school coach and Dave McCall and then going straight to J.R. Holmes, it's, it's two of the best that the state's ever seen. So that was definitely a reason why – I was able to be so successful, uh, and nowadays it, it seems like, you know, I think there are some great AAU programs and some great AAU coaches and people, but for the most part, uh, it is people's second job that they're they're doing, and it's really gone downhill a little bit. Talking with former Hoosier great Tom Coverdale, and not only that, Tom, but now you've got so many people involved, and not all of them. Not only do they have uh, the ki- they don't have the kids' best interest in heart, but they have their own interest is all that they care about, and they can be uh, persuaded to do things that are not exactly on the up and up. Yeah, that's true. I think that just goes into the, this day and age. You got so many people that can access these kids so quickly. Uh, where it wasn't that way back in the day. And that's one of the negatives, I think, of of social media and all the access that Twitter and Facebook and all that kind of stuff gives you um, to these actual kids at such a young age. They're exposed to it probably starting in eighth grade freshman year. So I think the kids start to get used to it and think that's a big part of what's going to make them successful. And it kind of, for some kids, can take away – from what's most important and that's you know working hard and going to the right school that's best for them and then not only that with the advent of social media and all that stuff and sometimes the, i don't know that the kids realize it but there's a lot more pressure on these kids before they ever even get to college much less once they're in college yeah i agree with everything you can access on the internet i mean a lot of, i mean when we were coming up, a lot of Indiana fans, for the most part, probably didn't see 
a lot of us in my whole recruiting class, especially the out-of-state kids, play until it was in person. So you don't have those expectations until you actually get there. Now, there are some exceptions, you know, where, you know, everybody traveled around and saw like the Damon Bailey's and Steve Alford's and stuff like that. But that was kind of hype that was warranted, you know, where with the access and videos and all that kind of stuff that comes out, I think it intensifies their, you know, their names and expectations before they even get to college. And the, when people talk about uh, Indiana, they say, man, I wish we had guys like they used to have. They're, they talk about the Michael Lewis's and the Dane Fife, but and they always mention Tom Coverdale because you have cemented yourself in the lore of uh, Hoosier fans, with if not not just for one game, but the, your play overall. But, but back when uh, the great game against Duke, when you were injured and, and you guys fought through all that, but what do you use from that for yourself to carry through life? Because that was a great moment, not just for you, for the team, but it, it's something that people can carry through as a life lesson. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that you learn that you take into the world is is two different things. One is just how to fight through adversity because that team had gone so far. We were all there for the most part when Coach Knight got fired and really came together. And then at the beginning of that final four season, um, you know, we, we started out the year seven and five and really it was a crossroads where it could have went really downhill or we could all come together. And so that whole year we were fighting through adversity and trying to overcome that. And then the second thing is just how, how, how close te- the team was and how big of a, um, teamwork and everybody kind of heading in the right direction is important to a team if you want to overachieve. And I, and what I mean by that is is you're going to have a lot of teams and in situations where you're so talented you can overcome not being a cohesive unit. But when, when you were us, I mean, we had one NBA player on the whole team and the rest of, of us were just really good college players. Uh, you have <laughs> to have con- – togetherness and, and fight through adversity to go through that. So those are really the two attributes I learned, especially from athletics my whole life that I try to take with me every single day. And, and I, I'll tell you, I got to used to, I used to be able to be a fan and things. And that was a time where I was actually just a fan. I remember being at that game in Lexington. Uh, it was a pretty incredible, a pretty incredible time for Indiana. But what is something that maybe people don't know about uh, uh, Coach Davis that, that he may have been going through at that time with that team? Uh, I w- I don't really know about at the time, but I think the thing that people don't realize is how great of a basketball mind he was from an offensive standpoint. And what I mean by that is, is you know, we, you know, the, the basketball IQ of that team, I think is what set us apart. I mean, we had probably over a hundred to 130 sets that we could go to at any time. And I think everybody on the team knew exa- exactly where to be and what to do on every set. Cause we did it over and over and over in practice. And at the end of practice, he would just see certain things and think of a play in his mind and, and draw the start, p- pull the starters over and say, Hey, let's try this and just draw it up on the board randomly. And if it worked against our in practice, we would implement it into the rotation. Now, I, I don't think you can do that with every team. You got to have, you know, five guys on the floor that can react and, and just play and, and know where to be on all plays. But as far as putting players in certain situations to make them successful, that was something that he was really, really good at. Talking with former Hoosier great Tom Coverdale. Yeah, Coach Davis, didn't he didn't get a lot of credit, but he had the unenviable task of not only following a legend, but following the legend. He followed Bob Knight, and it followed him at a time where uh, it's obviously very tumultuous. I don't know that anybody in any circumstance could have survived that, but someone who had really little coaching experience as he did, uh, he, and not being an IU person, he probably had just never had a chance to succeed in that row I would imagine yeah I mean I think it was definitely tough but I think another thing that he did really well in the beginning part is just delegate really well when you have you know the experience of you know a John Trelor on staff who who you know really took control and handled the defense and was you know 
when you're inheriting a situation or a program like that, you can't do it all on your own, especially as a first-time head coach. And he did a good job of understanding that and kind of playing to his strengths and playing off the strengths of his assistant coaches. Yeah, and I know people probably don't realize or they may think otherwise, but that's something that you probably don't think about every day where a lot of people do look back on those great games, those great times. But how often do you actually this, that games like that come to mind for you? I would say it's more around tournament time. You know, I, I've spoken on this before to where it's more of, all through March, you think of all the good times and, and the things that we got to experience. But then also, every time I watch a championship game, it kind of brings up bad memories. Not really bad because you got a chance to play in it, but I always think about you know the last eight minutes of, of the championship game where we take the lead with eight minutes to go, and then it's, it's what could we have done to actually win that game and win a national championship. So... You know, it, it, all through March, it, you think about all the good memories and, and the things you got to experience, but it's it's really hard watching a team celebrate winning a championship at the college level when you got that close. I, I, I say it all the time, the things that I've done that I've competed in, I remember the losses so much more vividly than the wins, and the losses hurt way more than, than the wins felt good. It, one, Yeah, it, exactly, and you're always – because it's – stuff that you feel like you could have could have uh, controlled you know so it, it's you always look back and, and say what if um, you know I think the good thing from our team is in I tell people you don't want to look back and and say what if as far as your effort and I think our team definitely doesn't do that it's just individual plays you feel like shots you could have hit or plays you could have made and a lot of people talk about uh, kids today that they're not like they used to be. I mean, I talked about you and, and, and Dane Fife and Michael Lewis and uh, uh, these guys that were just tough, uh, tough players. You could tell they were tough on the floor. They played tough. And no matter what, like you, you fighting through injuries. Uh, and then you look at last year's team, a lot of people talked about this team, played without any emotion, and they didn't seem like they uh, had – they were almost robotic have kids changed or was that just kind of an anomaly um i think you know kids have definitely changed a little bit but i think it goes back to you know how how the coaching they get at a young age to where it's you know a lot of aau balls just kind of throw the ball out and play if that makes sense oh, yeah. and, and i think that's changed changed things a lot yeah, the game has definitely changed it's the way it's played now. And and then this Indiana team, currently, you've got uh, Trace Jackson Davis coming in, Armand Franklin. They had kind of gotten away with the, uh, being able to recruit these Indiana kids at the end of the Tom Crean era, and, and Archie Miller's trying to turn that back around. And he's somewhat done a good job with that as he continues to try to add to his roster. How important do you think that is for a team, for Indiana, to have those Indiana high schools, high schoolers on their team? Uh, I think it's very important because you, you, I think it's not that it means more to Indiana kids, but they kind of grow up knowing about Indiana. It may mean a little bit more to them to have that jersey, on, you know, and that name on their chest. Now, there's obviously been guys through the years that it it means so much to to play here from out of state, but I think getting those in 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 state kids like they're getting is definitely going to help uh, moving forward and, and and continues that snowball effect of getting players like this uh, to continue to get better and in, in, in recruiting the state. Agree, Tom Coverdale. I cannot thank you enough for joining us. We appreciate it. Look forward to doing it again. Uh, maybe when we get closer to basketball season. But I hope everything's going well. And congratulations. Hope the twins keep uh, having fun. All right. Well, I appreciate you having me, and uh, you have a great day. You as well, Tom Coverdale, former Hoosier. Great joining us. Now we'll be back with more here on Indiana Sports Speed from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. 
an incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. For the best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. It's Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. TheDailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. For the best recycling and waste removal service, turn to the area's leader, Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling, a homegrown company serving southern Indiana since 1995. Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling serves Floyd, Clark, Harrison, and Washington counties for excellent service and peace of mind. Call Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling today at 812-944-5642. That's 812-944-5642. Keep life sweet with Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811 brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. Hey sports fans, this is Lily King. Make sure you tune in to Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Farrell. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Hope your day's off to a good start. If not, hopefully we can get ahead in that direction. Man, how feel like gambler? Are you a gambler? Well, you're going to have the opportunity uh, if you live in Indiana. They're uh, one step away, one signature away from Governor Eric Holcomb of signing the bill. Indiana will join uh, Nevada, Delaware, New Jersey, Mississippi, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island as states where sports wagering is legal. One of the biggest conversation points among state representatives is how much tax revenue any given state will see from legalized sport. The governor is expected to sign this bill into law sometime in the coming week. It's a big deal because the NCAA is located in Indianapolis. 
Uh, there's a lot of amateur sports located in Indianapolis. And of course, college betting is a, a big deal. So it's, it's going to be a uh, really a sticky wicket, as they say. Um, isn't that a British term? You have to look that up. <laughs> I think yeah, that a, almost has to be a British term. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I thought I was listening to Harry Potter there for a second. It's sticky wicket, I. Eh? Um, but yeah, it's college football gambling makes up a large portion. Football is estimated to make up 77% of U.S. sports wagering. 77%. College football wagering is, uh, that's, that's not all college, by the way. I'd say the probably majority of that or the big chunk of that's by the NFL. But the, the bill makes no reference to allowing or restricting collegiate sports wagering, although there is a clause that reads no betting on esports or amateur athletes under the age of 18. So no betting on the IHSA basketball tournament. Well, at least it's not legal. It won't be legal. You can't bet on uh, the AEU guys. But uh, that's a big deal for Indiana. I mean, I, it's a little shocking for me that Indiana is a state that's doing this. I mean, they're very, it's a very conservative state. You, you talk about some of the other hot button issues in society right now, marijuana is one of those. I think Indiana will be the absolute last state. I'd see I would see the Kremlin allowing use of marijuana before Indiana. But uh what do you think about that? Joker hit us up on the text line. I was talking earlier about the top 100 2019 class guys who's going where? There's quite a few headed to Arizona listed as of this moment. And I was surprised that uh, they haven't asked for a release. Joker said that the guys going to Arizona would have to give the money back to get out of their letter of intent, which they most likely have already spent and don't have it to return. Very possible. (laughs) Very possible. Tim hit us up also. Could you imagine if we could get the top guys from the Indiana Elite 2020 team? Leo Galloway, Lander, Coleman. Yeah, that's that's what I've long talked about. You could make a living. If you get the top guys in Indiana every year, you've got a, you've got what you need. You bring in Trace Jackson Davis, Armand Franklin, if you could have added Keon Brooks, and then next year you continue to add to that. And then the year after that, you continue to add to that. You will have a top flight team. But that's what it used to be. Pat Graham and Calbert Chaney and Greg Graham and Damon Bailey and Matt Nover. These guys were all from Indiana. Todd Leary. These guys were all from Indiana. All on the same teams. And how damn good was those te- were those teams? Damn good. They had the top talent of the India uh, from the state of Indiana. You don't see if you look at Indiana's roster right now, that's not what you see. Tom Crean did not have the ability to recruit Indiana. He had a very very short-lived run through Indiana. He he was not able to get that talent. And he took a lot of risks. But, man, he's in pretty damn good shape right now with one of the top recruiting classes coming to Georgia, including the number one overall recruit. But something else I noticed in that when I was looking at that list of top 100, there are teams that have more in the top 30 than the entire Big Ten has in the top 40. The Big Ten does not even have a player until Indiana at 27 with Trace Jackson Davis. 
Ohio State has DJ Carton at 31. Then you got Michigan State at 38, UM at 44. The Big Ten is built a little differently. Now, some's going to say, well, it's because they're not built on one and dones and yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, well, that carries over so far. But you could also say they can't land the talent. There's nothing to say that every guy every guy in the top 40 is not a one and done. The Big Ten is not landing the top talent. As of this current projection, it's a curious thing to see. You see teams like Washington that has like two or three recruits in the top 40. Florida is making a big push. Of course, you've got your mainstays, Duke and Kansas a little bit. But then you've got the upstarts like Memphis and Penny Hardaway building a little uh, a talent pod. But how's that going to work out? His, his coaching skills have yet to be proven. Yeah, he played in the NBA. He was a hell of a player in the NBA. But can he coach or can he, is he just going to out-talent people? You know, they do that down in Lexington. They out-talent people. But at the end of the day, that's resulted in one national championship in how many years now? I mean, it's... I'm just saying I don't see that that being a, a model for success because the one and done route has been sh- proven to not land you a national championship. If that is your goal, to win a national championship, the pathway is not through one and dones. That has been borne out time and again. You had the best team in a long time last year at Duke. They didn't even make the final four. You had one of the great, the the second greatest team I could think of in that span, Kentucky with John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins and that crew. They didn't win a national championship. So it's not about having all these one and dones, but it is about having the top talent. And The Big Ten is not, I guess they're not fashionable at the moment. You've got a lot of teams that have not, well, you really haven't had a, Michigan State has been the the billboard for the Big Ten for the last several years. I just uh, looked it up. Uh, I don't know how consistent it is that the Big Ten doesn't have the top 40 talent. coming in every year, but the Big Ten has had a team in the Final Four eight out of the last ten years. And some of those years being multiple teams. And so, that's I mean it, it doesn't always it doesn't seem to me if if it's consistent that the Big Ten doesn't have the top talent coming in every year, it oftentimes doesn't translate onto success on the court. And how many national championships has the Big Ten won since 2000 in the last 20 years? Zero. They haven't won one since 2000. Michigan State's national championship was the last national champion from the Big Ten. So the one and done model is not the model, but top talent is the model um, as far as winning a national championship. One of the exceptions that bears jumps out to me is Villanova in their run of two of three. So it's a tricky, it's a fine line. You, you, you've got to have a couple of things. One of it, of course, is always luck. But you can look over the course of all that and see it and read it a lot of different ways. Bill hit us up on the text line. How does a TJD 
be a burger boy at 27 and Keon Brooks at 14 not? Seems to me that someone's rankings are off just saying. Well, there was no doubt Keon Brooks was more than worthy of being on the McDonald's All-American team. He has, that that was a point of contention. He's always been rated higher than Trace Jackson Davis. And why Keon Brooks was not on the McDonald's All-American team, that's the question. That's the true question because he deserved to be. And, um, uh, but that's neither here nor there. But, um, yeah, that was a little surprising he got left off of that. We got a lot more coming up in the next hour. The 2019 Mr. Basketball from Indiana, Trace Jackson Davis, is going to join us. Looking forward to that. Mike Schumann from the Daily Hoosier as well. We got plenty to talk about, NBA draft status and all that. Stay tuned. Indiana Sports Speed from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Back with more right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the Golf Club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. TheDailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. For the best recycling and waste removal service, turn to the area's leader, Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling, a homegrown company serving southern Indiana since 1995. Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling serves Floyd, Clark, Harrison, and Washington counties for excellent service and peace of mind. Call Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling today at 812-944-5642. That's 812-944-5642. Keep life sweet with Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. 
you must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. Hey sports fans, this is Lily King. Make sure you tune in to Indiana Sports Week with Jim Farrell. This hour is brought to you by Sweetland Waste and Removal Service, a homegrown company serving southern Indiana since 1995. Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Boyle at the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Hope your day's off to a good start. If not, hope we get ahead of that right direction. Lots to get to today on the program and the biggest 2019 of Indiana Mr. Basketball. Trace Jackson Davis joins us. Also, we'll be talking to Mike Schumann from the Daily Hoosier. Looking forward to both of those. Plenty to talk about. You got the NBA playoffs going on right now as uh, the Houston Rockets have even the series with the Warriors. Eric Gordon, we had Eric Gordon Sr. on uh, last week and talked about how well that Eric Gordon was playing. And then he goes off after that and scores 30 uh, in their previous game. So a uh, great series right now for Eric Gordon and the Rockets uh, trying to knock off the Warriors. Hopefully they can keep that rolling. Uh, we wish them the best. We'll keep up and following those guys, uh, see what's going on with them. Also, um, looking at the uh, NBA draft status, man, there's a lot of things and changes that keep coming and going, and uh, we've been kind of following Romeo. He's Romeo Lankford, of course, the former Indiana Hoosier and uh, uh, high school phenom from Indiana. He, his status has just steadily dropped uh, over the course after the season is completed. He originally was listed as high as a top five, and now he's dropped out of the uh, top 20 currently projected by NBC Sports as being down around 22, um, largely on the fact of uh, his his performance last year. And, you know, I know, I know a lot of the Indiana fans like to claim uh, that injury affected that, and you're not seeing that in any of the uh, – if you look at the, at the inside draft information, you're not seeing talk of that because they're not buying that. Um but he's down around 22 right now. But that brings up an interesting point. The Indiana Pacers, I think they pick around number 17. Uh, is there a possibility that uh, he never has to lead the state for high school, college, and pro basketball? That would be something. I'm sure he'd certainly enjoy that. Uh, but but he's no longer listed as a lottery pick. Uh, still in the first round, though. 22 is still in the first round. I think that is it 30 or 32? I forget how many teams they have. But he still looked to be a, a, a first-round draft pick and uh, means he's going to make more money this year than both of us combined and everybody, most people listening as well. But Maryland, Maryland pulls in a big recruit. Coach Turgeon pulls in a big seven-footer with a 7'2", seven actually, with a seven-foot-11 wingspan. Dude from the Sudan originally, he's out in Channel, Arizona, finishing school. And then I looked at the uh, top 100 recruiting list for heist for uh, upcoming for college basketball. Um, some things jumped out. We were talking about it earlier. Um, first of all, Tom Crean has the number one overall pick in Anthony Edwards as he is heading to Georgia. And then you've got Memphis, who is now the the new flavor of the year as they have several players that have committed and or projected potentially going their way. One of those is Lester Quinones who makes his decision uh, this Friday, but I forget where he, he's not in the, he's pretty far down. 
He's number 49, so he's just inside the top 50. Projected Memphis at 91%. Now, does that mean it's a given? <laughs> no, even that does not mean it's a given. Indiana, I mean, there's a shot that he ends up in Indiana, but uh, I, I think that's largely built upon based on what these some of these other guys do. Uh, but having a lot of talent on a team has not stopped teams from piling up talent. Look at Memphis alone. Uh, but you get the Dukes, who, again, have several guys. Kentucky, several guys. Florida has got three in the top 30. But as a matter of fact, as I was looking through it, the Big Ten, the Big Ten does not have a single player in the top 25. You got a 20, number 27, Trace Jackson Davis, who's on the show with us today. Uh, but that's the first player of the Big Ten for the class of 2019. And then you go to uh, DJ Carton, who's headed to Ohio State. Indiana tried to get him at 31. Then Michigan State at 38 and Michigan at 44. So they got four in the top 50. Does it mean – I mean, uh, I, the teams are going back to being built on getting older now. Because the one-and-done model has proven it'll win you some games. There's no doubt about that. But it is not going to win you a national championship. The national championship has not been built on the backs of one-and-dones. It's built on the backs of, of good talent and developed talent. Texas Tech, look at that run they made. Villanova, the run that they had. But you can look at the arguably the two greatest teams of the last decade or longer or in that area of like last year's Duke team with Zion Williamson and that, that crew didn't even make the final four, much less win a national championship. You go back to Kentucky's team with John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins. They didn't win a national championship either. Arguably the two best teams of that era did not win a national championship. You've got to have the best talent that you could possibly have, but you also have to develop that talent. I've long said that Indiana could build, if they could just get the top recruits in the state of Indiana every year, they would be a juggernaut. That's what it used to be built on. And I'm not, I hate doing that comparison to especially the, the Bob Knight era because it was a different era, but there, there are some similarities in the fact that Bob Knight was a great coach, but he didn't have a team full of dudes that couldn't play. He had guys that could play, and they developed, but he had good talent. You know, our, our friend Todd Leary's on with us every, every week. Look at the teams that he was on. How many of those kids were from Indiana? Todd Leary being one of them. Alan Henderson. Calvert Chaney, Pat Graham, Greg Graham, Damon Bailey, Matt Nover. All those guys from Indiana. The core of those teams from Indiana. Now, there are other people from out, just outside, Eric Anderson from Chicago area. Reynolds, Jamal Meeks. But they were from uh, still around the area, but the core was still Indiana kids. And I still think the same way. Look at the kids today from Indiana, those top talent. The upcomers, Trace Jackson Davis being one of them. Keon Brooks is one that they didn't get that is really hurt, going to hurt them not getting him. But that's part of building that Indiana-based thing. Armand Franklin's a solid, and, and you've got more coming. Christian Landers and those kind, those types. I'm telling you, you land those guys, you're going to have a damn good team. Now, you have to develop that talent, but that's a pretty daggone good start. A real good start. You've got to have the talent, and that's what has been the problem with Indiana here the last several years. They're not getting that talent. It started with, with Tom Crean's inability, and then Archie had to fight his way back to, to getting that, and he's not completely there. 
losing Keon Brooks was a big blow. I mean, people can act like it's not, but it is. If you don't think so, how much better would Indiana be next year if you had him than not having him? There's no way that you're not going to say they wouldn't be better. Especially the year after that. It it, it makes a difference. Got to have the talent, man. Got to have the talent. Just got a text uh, from Tim. And, yeah, this is a somber note. Sad to read that Gary Austin died at age 79. He was his high school football coach at New Albany. He played on the uh, only undefeated New Albany team in 1954. He was the athletic director, coached girls golf, and was a biology teacher. He will be missed. Yes, Tim. uh, I I did not go to that school, obviously, but uh, his wife was actually my counselor in high school. So thank you for that. And, yeah. So our thoughts and prayers out to the family of Gary Austin, uh, former athletics director at New Albany High School, who has passed away. I uh, hate to hear that. We also got uh, a text in from Andy. Pacers pick 18th. And uh, he hopes they dra- dra- draft Lankford. Go ahead and take my money now for tickets if Romeo is a Pacer. So, it, it is now a very distinct possibility that that the Pacers could draft Romeo if they so choose to, because he has been projected to drop beyond their pick, which is 18. Do they do that simply for a PR move? They faced this dilemma before with Damon Bailey. It's a different situation. I'm not comparing them as players. I'm just comparing the situation because that was the same thing. It was looked at on as a PR move because people saw Damon as the next great thing, and and he was a hell of a player. His his lack of an NBA career had more to do with injuries than anything. Uh, But I'm not sure how long he would have made it. But – he was a Larry Bird in a six foot, in a smaller, he was a much smaller model of Larry Bird. And it's a lot easier to get away with, with some athletic deficiencies at six foot nine. But um, Romeo doesn't have the athletic problem. He's obviously a very, very super athletic kid and um, just one that is limited in scope. Do they see that as a good fit alongside of Victor Oladipo? Well, we'll find out because they're they're looking like they potentially will have the opportunity to draft him. Wouldn't that be amazing to go to high school, college, and and prof- play professionally and without ever having to leave the state or drive more than two hours from your home? Not a bad gig if you can get it. Not a bad gig if you can get it. On the program today, 2019 Indiana Mr. Basketball, Trace Jackson Davis. We try to always bring you the best guests, and I think we do a pretty good job of it. Looking forward to having TJD on here. You know, the last uh, time Indiana landed back-to-back Mr. Basketballs was uh, two decades ago with Luke Recker and Tom Coverdale, who Tom Coverdale was on the show yesterday. Uh, and then today we come back this year, the Indiana lands back to back Mr. Basketballs again with Romeo and Trace Jackson. We've got Trace Jackson on today. Looking forward to talking to him. Mike Schumann from the Daily Hoosier joins us after that as well. So, uh, we got a lot to get to on the program today. We need to take a break so we can get to it when we come back. That's who we'll be talking to. Trace Jackson Davis joins us from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Indiana Sports Speed back with more right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. 
Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the Golf Club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. For the best recycling and waste removal service, turn to the area's leader, Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling, a homegrown company serving southern Indiana since 1995. Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling serves Floyd, Clark, Harrison, and Washington counties for excellent service and peace of mind. Call Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling today at 812-944-5642. That's 812-944-5642. Keep life sweet with Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. Hey, sports fans, this is Lily King. Make sure you tune in to Indiana Sports Week with Jim Coyle. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million-dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Speed. Jim Coy with you as always. Thanks a lot for taking us along where we're going. And we are very, very fortunate to be joined by Trace Jackson Davis, Indiana's 2019 Mr. Basketball. That's got to have a nice ring to it, Trace. Yes, it does. Is that something that's been a lifelong dream since you've been involved in basketball in Indiana? I mean, that's got to be something that every high schooler just dreams of. Um, It really was. I honestly, just growing up, I wasn't even a big basketball player. I was just, like, just playing just to play, to have fun. Uh, And then coming into my freshman year, I grew, like, five to six inches. And my coach sat down with me, and he was like, you're unknown right now, but by the end, we're going to try to turn you into one of the top players in the state and a Mr. Basketball candidate. 
and I think he, we succeeded. Yeah, he certainly wasn't wrong, was he? He did that and then some. Uh, what a spectacular career. And, and are you somebody, I mean, a lot of kids in a new position, they, they are pretty familiar with the history of Indiana high school basketball, and it's a rich tradition. Do you follow the history? Um, I followed some of the history. Uh, I think just getting more and more and playing more and more in Indiana high school basketball, I think that's when you start to learn more about it. And when we played in the Hall of Fame Classic, you get to go to the, the museum and see all the history. So I'm pretty pretty familiar with it. And, and being part of that, I mean, all the great names, whether it's uh, Romeo Lankford from last year or go back to uh, people like Damon Bailey and, and through the years, uh, all the great players that have played uh, in Indiana. You know, Larry Bird didn't win Mr. Basketball, so you, you won up Larry Bird already. Oh, no. Most definitely. But some Most of these names is, is, that are in the annals of Indiana high school basketball, now you're etched in that, and that'll never be taken away and never change for the rest of your life. That's got to be a cool feeling. It is, yeah, it's a great feeling, honestly. Just having your name on that stature, just some of the recent names like Kyle Guy, Chris Wilkes, Romeo Lankford, and then some of the older players, Greg Oden, uh, Steve Alford, Damon Bailey, just just solidifying your name on that stature and on that list is just one of the, one of the great great lists. And getting to represent your high school, I remember what it was like in high school. It's hard as believe that is. It was a long time ago, but man, being in high school is just fun, and those are memories that you will never forget. But you're someone who has been able to represent not only your school but your community uh, in a very very positive way, and that's got to be a special thing for you and your parents as well. Most definitely. Um, the community and my high school has been behind my back all four years, and I owe a lot of credit to them because without them, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And, and what does it actually mean when you stop and think, man, I, I just won Mr. Basketball for Indiana, the greatest basketball state in the United States or the world for that matter? Um, it really just, it's still unbelievable coming from my eighth grade year and playing on the B team and then going into high school not knowing what to expect, not knowing if you're going to even play basketball, and then just working your tail off all four years and getting thrown into the MIC, which is one of the top conferences in the state, let alone the Midwest, and then just just playing your butt off. And then you start reaping the benefits, and you just get awards, and this is one of the most prestigious awards that I've ever received, and just I'm honored to have it. We're talking with the 2019 Indiana Mr. Basketball, Trace Jackson Davis. And, Trace, that's one of the things you just hit on is the hard work that goes in. And I know people know that uh, most people have to work hard, but I don't think they really understand the hours and the the miles that you, your parents, your family, but the hours of of everyday practice and going through the things you do uh, to get to a point like this, not just to winning Mr. Basketball, but but for for all the things that you've achieved already and, and the things that you're going to be achieving in the future when you move on to Indiana. Most definitely. It's just countless hours in the gym, countless hours working out on top of school, and then on top of even having your already practices with your team. And when you, you're doing all that, I know that uh, it, it's easy. You're younger. You have a lot more energy. But you still have to be driven to put that kind of time and effort in to get to the kind of level you've achieved. Uh, where do you pull that drive from uh, to, to do that? Um, I think it's a lot of it comes within. Um, I think having a little brother helps you out a lot. Having parents that want to motivate you and push you helps a lot. Um, I give a lot of credit to my family because they help push me and to become the best I can be. Yeah, and and you're uh, my daughter is in the same situation. She is a stepfather and a father. Both of us try to be a great influences on her life, and you've been fortunate for that as well. Your father Ray has always been there to support you, and your uh, your uh, father that also played in the NBA. So you, you get a lot of support that uh, that you seem to have turned into a very very positive thing. Most definitely. They both supported me big time throughout the process. And, and we talk about your dad who played in the NBA. What are you able to draw from that side of things to, to improve your game? Oh, he's taught me so many things. Um, just really been helpful throughout the whole high school career. Um, some things that no one else knows. So it's just big. 
Absolutely. And now, once you get, you got the All-Star game coming up, uh, Indiana-Kentucky All-Star game has been going on for a long, long time. Uh, Indiana always uh, takes pride and dominated that series for a long time. But it's also a lot of pressure because you guys can't go in and lose to Kentucky, man. Yeah, I agree. Um, Kentucky's got a lot of great players on their team, but we also have a lot of great players. Um, it's going to take a team effort to win, but I think that we can handle them. And you've played on the AU teams and things like that. Sure, you're used to playing on teams that have a lot more talent than you would be accustomed to, to say, with a high school team. Uh, but what's it like playing with a team that, for every position, guys are just good? Uh, I love it, honestly. Because it takes some pressure off yourself. And, um, and I'm not a selfish player to begin with. So just having other players, it just lifts my level of play. Um, but um, I know it's the same for them, and um, I know they can't wait to get out there. What are some of the things you're looking forward to before you go on to Indiana that you've got to do this summer? We just talked about the Indiana All-Star game. I'm sure that's something. Uh, are there anything else, that, things you're looking forward to, finalizing, I guess kind of finalizing your high school career in a way? Um, graduation is going to be a big thing. Um, then, yeah, the Indiana All-Star is also a big thing, and just – saying goodbye to my friends because I know a lot of them are going off to college elsewhere. So it's going to be big kind of spending a few few days with them before I leave for IU. And now talking about Indiana, that is a special thing. Not only now you're in Indiana Mr. Basketball, but you're going to be playing at Indiana University. Again, one of the most premier programs in college basketball, and you're going to be roaming the uh, the Assembly Hall. That's got to be something big that you're looking oh, forward yeah. to. It's huge. Oh, I chose Indiana because just the culture, um, the fans, um, the coaching. Um, their coaches were on me since day one. Coach Miller got the job, and they called me every day, well, about every day until I committed. So it was just big, and just having the fans behind your back is just a huge thing for me. And you get to play with uh, Armand Franklin, someone that you're very familiar with. Uh, when at Indiana, he's also going to IU. Uh, is it is it make it easier or nicer to go in with someone that you're very familiar with, like him? Most definitely, uh, Armand and I. We are already close, but after I committed, we got became even closer. Uh, he's going to be my roommate down there. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, put in a lot of work together and push each other to be the best we can be. So. Um, I can't wait to get down there with him. And then we got Joey Brunk, who's coming in as well. Um, I have started to get close with him. I work out with him. So we've, we've kind of become closer as well. And then already, already the guys down there. So I really can't wait to get started with them. And what's the biggest thing you're looking forward to as a transition from high school to college to going to IU and the, and the college game? Because uh, you, you've played a lot of great teams at the high school level, but now when you move up to Indiana to the Big Ten, you're going to be playing schools like Duke or North Carolina and, and those kind of schools. And playing in the Big Ten, that's got to be a challenge that uh, you're looking forward to in a big way. Most definitely. It's a huge challenge, but I just think about it with God on my side and just just try to be the best I can be and just give it my all. I think that I'll do pretty well. Uh, I'm going to get get roughed up a bit, but it's going to happen. Being a freshman, not everything's going to go smoothly, so i got to understand that. But Coach Miller said that at the end of the day, you're, you're going to do big things. you just got to work for it. What's the biggest thing you're looking forward to is going on to college, uh, playing at Indiana? W what does that mean to you in itself? Growing up in the state of Indiana, uh, again, playing at IU has got to be uh, something that a lot, not everybody, but a lot of kids look forward to doing or not, and don't get the chance. Now, you don't not, not only get the chance, but you're going to be doing it and expected to be a big part of it. Most definitely. Just being in state, um, being so close already, um, and just wearing Indiana across your chest, playing for the greatest fans in college basketball, um, it's just it's just a blessing, honestly. Um, one of the pristine arenas as well, and just having them fill out every game, it's going to be so fun, and I really can't wait. I know you've been to Assembly Hall numerous times, but as a, a, a fan, so to speak, but now when you step onto that court and play with those fans, what do you think that's going to be like the first time? Um, it's going to be great. Honestly, just hearing them cheer, um, it's just, just going to be, I just really can't wait. It's giving me goosebumps right now thinking about it. 
And then, of course, as you come in, you're part of a, a new era at Indiana. Archie Miller in his, uh, just finished his second season. He's looking to get things started, and you're going to be a big part of that. How important is it to you to be a part of getting Indiana back to where uh, it was back in the glory days? Oh, it's going to be huge. Um, I think that Coach Miller's try, trying to lay a foundation and it, it includes us, and we got to just try to get Indiana back on the map and back to its glory days, what it used to be. Looking forward to that. Are you doing a lot of recruiting on the side still? You, you've been a big recruiter for the Hoosiers. Yeah, I've been trying to. Uh, I've been talking to Lester a little bit, trying to know a little bit, but uh, even if we don't get them, I still think that we're pretty good with who we have. Absolutely. Uh, I cannot thank you enough for joining us today, and, and I wish you the absolute best of luck, Trace. Congratulations on being named 2019's uh, Mr. Basketball for the state of Indiana. What a prestigious honor, and uh, no more deserving person than you, and uh, congratulations to that. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir, and you have a great day, Trace. We look forward to seeing you on the Assembly Hall floor. Yes, sir. You too. Wow, what a great opportunity to get to talk to Trace Jackson Davis, one of Indiana's biggest recruits coming in in the 2019 Indiana Mr. Basketball. Uh, look forward to seeing him on the floor at Assembly Hall and uh, see what they can get done next year. That's going to uh, wrap it up for this segment. We've got plenty more coming up here on Indiana Sports Speed. Stay tuned. We're back with Mike Schumann right after this. On and on, I got nothing to hide. On and on, I got nothing to hide. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. It's Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. TheDailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for it each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. For the best recycling and waste removal service, turn to the area's leader, Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling, a homegrown company serving southern Indiana since 1995. Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling serves Floyd, Clark, Harrison, and Washington counties for excellent service and peace of mind. Call Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling today at 812-944-5642. That's 812-944-5642. Keep life sweet with Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large 
or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. Hey, sports fans, this is Lily King. Make sure you tune into Indiana Sports Week with Jim Foyle. Today's guest is brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville with hand tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice cold beer. Pizza, burgers, beer. Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. What's Welcome back to the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Coyle with you as always. Hope your day is off to a good start. Mike Schumann from the Daily Hoosier with us now. Michael, how are you, man? Doing great, Jim. How are you? Good, good. Uh, just finished up with Trace Jackson Davis, Indiana's uh, 2019 Mr. Basketball. So uh, great to have him on and uh, see what his thoughts are as he's heading down the stretch as he'll be coming to die you probably in about another month. Yeah, it's great to have a second consecutive Mr. Basketball headed to Bloomington. It's interesting how rare that is to actually happen. And a surprise to me, it's never actually happened three times in a row. So something to keep an eye on for next year. Yeah, that uh, a great point. Um, and, and next year's field is kind of crowded i haven't we'll have to do that one day maybe the next show look at potential mr basketballs for next year to see uh how much of a reality that could could uh be but uh archie's certainly not uh leaving stones unturned in that 2020 class that's for certain yeah he's been very active lately including within the state which i know makes makes a lot of people happy i mean i think I think you and I have talked about this before. I think that there's probably a good balance in there somewhere that we all are not. We all, but I believe it's important to place a heavy emphasis on recruiting the state of Indiana, you know, e- even in classes like 2020 where, where, you know, I, I would be the first to admit it. it it's, a, it's a down year. There, there's certainly talented kids that are big 10 caliber players, but they're not, you know, they're not Trace Jackson Davis's or Romeo Langford's. But but at the same time, you know, they're they're, they're kids that are going to be, you know, very valuable four year guys like Anthony Leo, like Trey Galloway, that, you know, it makes a heck of a lot of sense for a number of reasons to continue to emphasize. So, um, yeah, I think that race next year for Mr. Basketball is wide open with, with a lot of potential winners. Yeah, we'll certainly see how that works out. I was just talking earlier uh, about. You know, if you look at the top 50 or top 100 recruits, uh, the Big Ten doesn't show its face until number 27, and that's Trace Jackson Davis going to Indiana. Um, that's the first recruit inside of the – and only recruit inside the top 30 that's going to a Big Ten school. Yeah, that, that's surprising, and that's that's been the case for a few years now. Um I guess, it, you know, if you have to point to something, it's just the, the kind of teams that are that have been on top of the Big Ten lately, like, you know, a Michigan that has historically not really dabbled in the, in the five star market or at least not emphasized it too much. They like to play in the, the next tier right below that. And, you know, Wisconsin doesn't even come close to that. They're 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 more of a program type you know, system where, you know, they get, they get guys, four-year guys that, that are going to, you know, really buy into what they're trying to do kind of the same way at Purdue. Um, you know, the, the exception there historically has been Michigan state, but even them lately, they, they've not really, you know, had a great deal of success on the recruiting side. They haven't really dropped off at all on the, on the floor, which probably tells you something about, you know, maybe, maybe we emphasize, recruiting and especially five-star recruiting a bit too much and you know further to that point you know just the 
results in college basketball this year with, you know, Texas Tech and Virginia type teams having as much success as they they do. It's just further substantiation that that the 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 nature of college basketball is changing as we speak. Yeah, that and uh, there's also, you know, what I call the shoe schools. Uh, the shoe schools are, are up there a lot, obviously. You've got, you know, Dukes and the Kentuckys. Um, they're, they're still up there. Of course, Nike is the school, the, the shoe company that hasn't been hit yet. Uh, then you got the flavor of the, 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 the day right now, Memphis, uh, and Penny Hardaway, who is drawing a lot of water and drawing a lot of talent uh, from this particular class. Um, but there, then there's some oddities like, uh, Florida has got three in the top 30, uh, Washington is up there. Uh, so it's, it's just some, some oddities. Uh, then you've got Arizona, uh, another shoe school. Um, and by shoe school, I mean, the schools that are obviously getting, uh, big benefits from the shoe company. Uh, thank you, Bill Self to Brandon Dawkins. Um, but my, my big question is these guys are going to Arizona. How are, are they going to stick there? And why would they? I mean, there, there's a big cloud hanging over uh, that school right now. Yeah. It's, it's a really interesting time in, in that regard with that investigation going on. I mean, I guess on the one hand you could say, you know what, there, there's a lot of names flying around right now. You know, how much weight can you really put into anything that's coming out? But, on, but on the other, you know, there, there's been some, you know, positives coming out of that trial as well. Like I heard the other day that, you know, I, I, I forget the names. I'm not following it closely enough to to remember all the, the characters involved here, but, but one of the guys that spilled a lot of information actually said that Izzo at Michigan state was, you know, adamantly opposed to, to, to paying money or getting involved in that game whatsoever so so it's not as if some somebody's just trying to smear everybody i mean there there's been some good and some bad uh characterizations coming out of this so to that point i mean i I, i've continued to struggle with you know kind of like what you're saying why why are kids you know placing so much faith in schools like you know for for example what we're seeing in iu related recruitments like at lsu you know it, no, nobody's been definitively convicted of anything, but at the same time, there, there's a lot of damning evidence out there that it, at least if you were, you know, making such a significant decision as some of these kids are, you might at least think, okay, you know, I've got some other really good options here. I've got this evidence here that that tells me that, you know, you know, don't know if it if it's right or wrong, but. It, it, it at least should make me think, you know, maybe one of these other options is just a, a safer bet right now. And it's it's just as good of an option. That That's the way I'm looking at it with with what's going on. But it doesn't seem to be stopping people. I mean, to your point, Arizona's put together a really good class. And so have, so have the other schools. Yeah. You know, my my feelings on the LSU thing, I, I, I posted it and I don't I, I have done change. I think it's disgusting. Uh, I can't believe in anybody would be going there. I can't believe that any parent would allow their child to go there. Uh, and that's my opinion. And that's not going to change because he's a cheating SOB. He's caught on the FBI wiretaps. And so that's that. But they're looking at the NBA. They're looking at, at, at they're, they're not looking at the college. They're not going to be in school for four years. They don't care about that. They What is my easiest and direct path, most direct path to the NBA? Because anybody that, that's going to LSU, that's their thought pattern. Uh, that's what they're right. thinking. Uh, so that's there's, that's a given. But I still – there's a lot of other ways you can get there without going right. through a known cheater. That, and that's a thing that I don't – I can't – I cannot comprehend that. I cannot wrap my hands around – or my head around the fact that, dude, he's a known cheater. Stuff's going to be happening. You don't think there's an investigation coming at LSU? You're nuts if you don't think that. It's on the well, way. And, and since when is Will Wade the uh, the – ticket to the NBA. I mean, I don't, I don't know of anybody that associates him with, with a quick, you know, development and quick path to the NBA. And well, apparently you know, since he started making strong ass offers. <laughs> right. I mean, obviously one of the players we're alluding to here is Trinidad Watford, who, you know, based on everybody I've ever talked to that, that family is, 
you know, just as strong and as good as it as they come. So it's it's oh, really yeah. hard for me to believe there's anything nefarious going on there. But but at the same time, you know, they, they they're the ones that have got to be thinking the things that we're thinking or otherwise you it, it at least makes you wonder. And I've never suggested that or intended that. But my question is, what the hell? What's the thinking? I mean, really? Uh, there's just of all the places, there's not one place that you can find that's not a a known cheating place. Well, whatever. I mean, whatever floats your boat. I I don't care. But I mean, I'm also not gonna not not acknowledge it either. But it is yeah, what it the, is. To your point, I th- I think Watford's is almost exclusively focused on the M- NBA. Everything I've seen from him su- suggests that that he's that kind of player, and and that and that's completely fine. I mean, he's got the the rankings and the and the success to back that up, but at the same time, I don't think he's a a one and done kid. I don't think he's that kind of athlete, and and so you know he he if I were advising him, I'd be saying you you should at least be going into this thinking you're going to be in college for two to three years, and you know be looking for a program that you think is going to be able to sustain you for that long. Even if if he were closer to being a one and done, there's the danger of that one season being blown up by the NCAA simply because of what's going on down there. But hey, that's whatever, man. Let's let them do what they're going to do. But uh, and talking about the draft, you know, I was talking about that earlier. Romeo, who started out as a top five uh, projected pick in the NBA draft, now outside of the top twenty, um, which is just. Oh, he's still in the first round, but uh, it's, he's not going to be poor by any stretch of the imagination. But now you're looking at the possibility of the Indiana Pacers having a shot at drafting Romeo Langford, and do they do that if that pick is available? Yeah, yeah, I, I wrote an article about that last week, as a matter of fact, and I thought, you know, the, there's two sides there, and I'm curious what you and others think, you know, with Victor Oladipo already on the team, does does the front office have to think – you know, do can we have too much of an IU flavor on our team, considering that we are the Indiana Pacers that represents fans of all schools, including Purdue and Butler? I mean, would you be too thrilled about watching a Carson Edwards and you know, name your other Purdue guy, Indiana Pacers team? I I, I think it would it. You know, while you wouldn't want that to go into your thinking, it is ultimately a business and you wouldn't want to kind of marginalize the the fan base in that way. So that's an interesting side of it. You know, when I've talked to other people about, you know, is it does Langford fit what the Pacers need right now? I think I think it's a little mixed. They, They definitely need more, you know, natural scores. But but I don't know that he's going to be ready to step in on day one and fill that void just because he has some obvious developmental needs right now in terms of, you know, he his offhand isn't what I would consider NBA ready. You know, he's elite NBA ready on his right hand. But if you force him left, you know, he, he he's probably got a couple of years before that that catches up. You know, he's still me. 18 years old so he's got plenty of time to to catch up but uh, um and the other thing is the obvious you know his, his jump shot which you know he's he's showed development there over the course of the, of the season but it's still not anywhere close if you're going to draft a, a shooting guard in the first round you know the probably more than anything else in today's NBA you want somebody that is a really strong three point shooter and he's obviously just not there yet so i understand the risks yeah, and, and it's something they have to, to to weigh. I mean, we've had that before, you know, back in the day. They they it was the same PR kind of a thing when when Damon Bailey was coming through, uh, and run the, the, the risk of hey, is it worth drafting a guy just because he's a popular uh, player within the state? And that probably would have worked had his injuries not been uh, caught up to him so much. But it, it's just something that they definitely are going to have to weigh that out. Yeah, and the the other question that seems to keep popping up over over Langford, and I've heard mixed opinions on this as well, is just his overall kind of on the court demeanor. You know, is he an alpha type player? I think most people would say no, but I guess the 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 follow up to that is can can you be developed into one? Uh, my my opinion is no, but I've heard other people say you know just you know gaining more maturity and confidence. He may not be a 
you know, ultimate alpha player like we see in the league, but but he can develop enough into one that that it won't be a concern anymore. So, you know, there, there's a lot of things that you know, if if I didn't know what I knew, I'd, I'd say, hey, I'm not convinced that this kid isn't gonna still consider coming back. Um, but but I've <laughs> but on the same token, I've I've not heard anything to suggest that. So uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't tell anybody to get their hopes up, but if you were just evaluating this kind of on it, on its face, you'd say, you know, th- this is a case where a kid ought to really think about it. Cause there's, there's a lot that could, you know, develop over the course of a year and put him in a lot better position. You know, he, he's still that top five kind of player. If, if all the pieces come together. Yeah. And, and should he come back? Absolutely. Uh, and I did not one time say that this year, not once. Um, but should he? Absolutely. Uh, he's more ill prepared than most people thought. Um, and, but they're not going to do it. There, there's no way he's coming back. They'll, they, I think that they would, the inner circle may look at it as a, a failure if he did that. So, or whatever, but, um, that, that's, that's, that's on their that's their decision and uh, to move forward. But yeah, he he definitely has. You mentioned his offhand, his shooting, uh, and those are real things. And it's nothing to do with an injury. There's a reason you don't see the NBA people talking about his shot and and then and, and following it up with talk about an injury because they don't believe that because it's not they did not have the impact that that the fans think that it did. And and it's something that he's going to have, have to develop because I got news for you, he's not going to be able to to drive and drive and drive because you get into people like Draymond Green or we'll knock him back to New Albany. I mean, right. you're going to have to have more aspects to your game than be able to drive to the rim. Um, right. And to a and, certain extent, we already saw that, you know, in, in college, you know, I think people figured out how to defend him and it really limited what he was able to do. And I think, uh, you know, look, look at a Carson Edwards. I mean, I think, you know, he, he's, in my opinion, he he would actually took a step back this year in terms of, uh, in a lot of respects. But some of that was due to the fact that they weren't as strong in the post as they were last year. But you know his percentages went down, his efficiency went down. But he also was elite in the NCAA tournament and kind of rode that wave of momentum that I think he significantly boosted his draft stock. And, and at as an extension of that, you know the money that he's going to get, and, and you know. I, I could see Langford going on that kind of run next year if if he got all the pieces together. But but you know you you have to be of the mindset that you're even willing to do it. To your point, which I, I would agree, I don't I don't see a willingness from that camp based on everything I'm hearing that that that, that would ever happen. Absolutely not. Now we're looking at the possibility of having sports gambling in Indiana. Uh, they're just one step away from the government governor signing that bill, man. And there's going to be gambling in Indiana, the, the state that, that the home of the NCAA. Uh, it's kind of weird, especially for Indiana. It's such a conservative state. Uh, like I said earlier, I go, man, you talk about some hot button issues. Like marijuana is obviously one of the biggest issues in the country. Uh, and I see Indiana being, I, I see the Kremlin allowing marijuana before uh, Indiana does. Uh, so to have sports gambling, that's kind of fun. It's kind of a, I would not expect that. Yeah, I, I would agree. I'm kind of surprised that this is has caught on so quickly. Uh, the the one thing I keep coming back to, I, I'm not a big gambler, but I'm also not in any way really opposed to it either. I'm kind of teach their own on that. But, you know, I, I feel like the sports that, that have gambling heavily associated with it, like horse racing and others, kind of always have this cloud of suspicion hanging over them. And you know, no, no more was that more a topic than than the Kentucky Derby this weekend, and and it makes me wonder, you know, is, is that going to just become more and more of the narrative? I guess in in all sports now, with with gambling so freely available, or is that just going to be something that kind of just hangs over sports and, and kind of is a negative associated with this? I'm curious what what you or other people think about that. Yeah, I think it's a it, like I said earlier. I used a funny term. It's a sticky wicket for Indiana because it's not just the NCAA here. I mean, there's a lot of amateur. The A in the AAU house in Indianapolis. Uh, yeah. There's a yeah. lot of amateur sports places that are that are housed in, in Indianapolis. 
uh, and it's the home for a lot of events, um, not the NCAA withstanding, but there's a lot of things that go on, And uh, but I, I think it's just the way of the world, and uh, and, and gambling is something that is so widespread now because of the internet anyway that it almost doesn't even matter anymore. And they're like, hey, they're doing it regardless, so we're missing out on this. And it's an adult thing. I mean, you, people have the right to do whatever they want to do. They've got the lottery. They've got horse racing. So what's the difference? It cracks me up in places try to differentiate between forms of gambling, like Kentucky. They won't allow it, but yet their biggest their biggest deal is the the derby and horse racing which is built on gambling so it, it's just funny how people view things right and it's going on anyway whether whether we like it or not i've i've heard about high school football betting lines so i mean you might as well bring it as much above ground as you can is my opinion absolutely mike schumann from the daily hoosier thanks a lot for joining us man i appreciate it all right jim have a great one i appreciate it you bet Mike Schumann from the dailyhoosier.com. Check out complete free IU coverage there. That's going to wrap up the show today, man. We appreciate everybody joining us. It was great. What's that? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, but appreciate everybody joining us. We'll be back tomorrow with plenty more from the golf club at Eagle Point Studios. I'm Jim Coyle, and I will see you on the radio.